Hey everyone, here I am in my brand new place. I'm calling it the layer. Every sideboard is a layer, right? I've got lasers and everything, but we'll get into that in another video. Today, we're going to take a look at the Osmo Pocket, a tiny little camera with a gimbal made by DJI right here in Shenzhen. Yes, I know lots of other channels have covered it, but this is one of those few products where I think most reviewers just didn't get it. Let's take a closer look. I'll show you how it works and why I like it. As you can see, even in my hands, it's pretty tiny. When you turn it on, the gimbal self-calibrates. This is the one thing I don't like. The feel or wheel of the camera lens is much too narrow for relogging. You can put a magnetic wide-angle lens on which fixes the issue, but only after the camera self-calibrates. So you end up taking it on and off when really, if it were up to me, I would like to be able to just leave it on all the time. There is a tiny touch screen on the front and basic controls. I didn't mess too much with that, no need. And this, this small display was perfectly fine for framing shots, but you can also connect it to your phone and get access to a lot more options. It has an internal battery that seems to last about two hours. I didn't have any problem with the battery dying and I always have a power bank with me anyway. So I don't view this as a big issue. Two hours is perfect for a day of vlogging. Trying to edit more than that each day and cut it down would be too time consuming. This brings me to my main point. I feel this is an ideal vlogging and travel camera. That's why I asked my friends at Git Buying to send me one to bring to Japan with me. I figured it would be perfect for the trip and I think I was right. Take a look at some of the footage I've been shooting. Most of this is for my sponsor only vlog. Only $5 a month you can get exclusive access to my vlogs and see my regular videos before they go public. Not bad, right? I don't think I would have gotten a lot of those shots without the Osmo Pocket. Let me explain why. You'll notice that in a lot of my two reviews, I focus a lot on size and weight. Obviously, because my hands are about half the size and I'm about a third as strong as most guys who are the sort of people these tools tend to be designed for, take the classic vlogger setup with a digital SLR or a micro micro four-third camera on the gorilla pod. I can carry that for 20 seconds. I'm just not strong enough. But here's the thing. I've started noticing as I watch more vloggers use that kind of setup. They aren't strong enough for it either. You see shots end not at a natural break in the conversation or when the action stops. But when the camera starts to shake because they're tired from holding it up, Sure, they can hold it up 10 times longer than me, but their content is still dictated by and limited by their stamina. They're missing great natural unscripted shots because it takes time to get that whole thing out and there is a physical limit on how long they can shoot for. Sure, they get super duper ultra high quality video of whatever they're able to shoot, but there are a ton of shots they just won't get. Taking a tool with legacy ergonomics dating back over a century? That's designed to be held close to your face with two hands and holding it backwards at arm switch with one hand, it was never a good idea. It's just something bloggers may do with because there were no better solution available at the time. 
the Osmo is a better way to do this at the cost of some quality. But that's to be expected if you get rid of half a kilo of glass, it's designed to be held with one hand and light enough that if you want to hold it at arm's length, you can do that and the weight is hardly more than if you have nothing in your hand at all. This lets you shoot more longer, which means stamina is not dictating your content and making you change scenes or workflow to accommodate physical factors. Even with your cell phone camera, it's either a selfie pole which is banned in many places now or a gimbal and wide-angle lens which, again, the way will eventually get you. But what about a big gimbal? They're designed just for shooting stable video and can be held with two hands. I love my Moza gimbals and Sony A6500 setup for shooting my projects outside but it only takes 10 minutes to get the video I need. The project usually draws a crowd of people watching, so the gimbal attracting attention is not an issue. The time is predetermined and the location scouted beforehand, so getting it out and set up is no problem. But if you plan to shoot sporadically all day, run and gun, maybe shoot places like the Shenzhen Electronics Markets where you really aren't supposed to be shooting video, and if the guard sees you with a big rig, they'll stop you. You want the Osmo Pocket for that. On my trip to Tokyo, I went with someone so I could get help with video, my luggage, and all that. The basic kit for the whole trip consisted of an Insta360 for VR tours and the Osmo Pocket for relogging. The whole thing could fit in my bare backpack anytime I came across a cool location. I could just take out the appropriate camera and I was good to go in seconds. No need to lug a heavy bag of equipment around all day. And whether we admit it or not, those big camera bags always change travel plans and reduce the number of places you visit. Take a look at these shots from my sponsor Relog. <laughs> Imagine trying to navigate through those crowds with a full-size gimbal without knocking into people or the whole setup just drawing attention away from the subject. It would be incredibly difficult. As for quality, you can see more than good enough for my needs. Could the audio use work? Yeah, but again, it's good enough for relogging. If you want to start getting into video, I wouldn't say the Osmo should be your first purchase. That should be a good quality phone with a camera. But if you are shooting outside of a studio or workshop, outdoors, food, travel, I definitely think it's the best option available for getting stable shots that you'll miss while dragging larger equipment around or waiting to get it unpacked. If you decide to buy one, do me a favor and buy it from Gip Buying and thank them for giving me a review unit. It lets me shoot better content for you to enjoy. What do you think? Small gimbals, big gimbals, no gimbals. If you are a videographer, how do you try and limit the weight of your kit? Let me know in the comment section. And as always, if you can sponsor, that's 100% okay. I'm more stable financially thanks to all your help and support. But please, if you can, share my video with your friends. I would really like to hit a million followers. That's it for today and I'll see you all next time.